Most of the games on that list I haven't played, and I'm trying to work up. Most of the games that I played this year are all like demos or previews of stuff coming up. Okay, so you're. I mean, this is as much as you want to put down then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I did earlier, but yeah, okay, do it again. Yeah, I may mention like one or two games that are on that list, but like I also have all the hardware that I just wrote. Uh, this is as much as you want to put sorry. down. Like, just got something, just chime in, it's not, it's fine. Are you ready to play I have the assault. Twitch channel Dig running in our window. And I like it. To siege. Uh, yeah. Open that too. In this arena, bullets are nothing without brains. We have a battlefront bag. I'm interested to see what this looks like. In one bold move. Are you? Then, that way we can see any comments, right? Yep. You guys all might want to mute your notifications on anything else. Never. They're going to hear my notifications and they're going to like it. GOTY worthy? Yeah. Oh, this is a new list. Uh, uh, cool. Yeah, can't disagree with any of that. I definitely uh, have some I would put in, but I'll let anyone. One of my contenders for best game of the year is Pillars of Eternity. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is this like when we all say what we really think should be on there if it's not listed? Well, my, I mean, my, it's, it's hard for my, my favorite game I played this year by far was Ori and the Blind Forest. I, but I, that's when I, I feel like, I don't either, like a lot of other people didn't play or they just didn't quite love it as much as me. But, yeah. Right, it's just for me. I think for me, it, it taps a lot of my just kind of interest. I, I'm a big fan of those kind of exploration Metroidvania style games, and I really, you know, I, I I love like a 2D animation and stuff like that. People know me know that. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, then the only the big one I think is Witcher Three. I think Witcher Three needs to be on. That's that's a big contender. Uh, and then, like, the other one for me, like, I don't know if I'll get a lot of other people's support, this was Metal Gear Solid Five, which, a game I love, but it, it has pro enough problems that I don't think it should get the top spot, but it was, it was, it was a game to remember, at least. Huh. Yeah, sure, for sure. Right, Witcher, Witcher 3 needs to be there. Maybe Metal Gear Solid Five maybe doesn't need to be. Well, uh, I have a lot of outlier games there, and uh, I think one that everybody seems to, you know, be talking about is Fallout 4. Uh, that's one of the ten on my list. Um, but I actually put that at number uh, nine on my list. Um, wow. You know. Uh, yeah, if you guys are actually saying that you, you like you like Fallout 4 and it's on, it goes on your list, then it was on my list too, so I wouldn't argue with that. So if Fallout uh, 4 is like, it's like a number five for me. It's definitely on the list. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. What about uh, what about Undertale? It's a yeah. It's just because I mean everyone's talking. It, that's like the most kind of like surprise, and everyone's talking about game right now. You know, mm-hmm. that's I think it's stuff we need. We need a longer discussion on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you know, I really like Black Ops 3's uh, multiplayer. Um, I thought Star Wars Battlefront was pretty good as well. Um, Battlefront's an interesting case. It's, it's a game I liked a lot, but it's a game I wanted to like more than I did. Mm, right. I don't know if it's really a top, if you were one of those really top five. Right, exactly. It's like a game I like a lot, but it's like, it's got enough problems, it's hard to like, it's hard to like really say that was the best game this year. Right. But it, anytime I see Steven, I just look at all his his virtual boy and his Neo Geo machine, I get insanely jealous and mad at him. Mm-hmm. Well, I just, uh, just for the record for this, you know, broadcast, I, I mentioned the ones that I already posted on, which were my favorite games, and then maybe um, the five that were, you know, the, the tops. So mine included Batman, Arkham Knight, uh, Call of Duty, Black Ops 3, Fallout 4, Fallout Shelter, first mobile game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, game of Thrones. Halo 5 Guardians, Mad Max, Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, Total War Attila, and Until Dawn. And the first, you know, favorite favorite game I had was Until Dawn. Um, second was uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Uh, third, Total War Attila. Fourth, Rise of the Tomb Raider. And fifth, Halo 5 Guardians. Hmm. See, it, it's interesting because we, we made, you know, for those watching, like our process, we made a list and we put like our initials by like the one that we you know we thought should be talked about. The only one that got f- like four initials on it was Rise of the Tomb Raider. That mm-hmm. seemed to be the only one that was like, a, oh, and I'm yeah, yeah. So that one was kind of one. It's like a lot of those other ones, Dean. Like yeah, it's like they were all good games. Like Batman, I liked it a lot. Um, you know, it's, it, it, even even Call of Duty. Yeah. It's just like each, each it's and that's kind of like a thing with a lot of these games this year. Like I I played so many games I liked, but there was like a problem here or a problem there. That like stopped it from being like an all-time great for me per se. I don't think so. I don't think we should put a game on the list that was essentially unbroken on one. That was essentially broken on one platform. I guess, yeah. I mean, people definitely hold held Unity's brokenness against it last year. But did it eventually get fixed? Kind of. Just because. Oh, go ahead. Hey, hey, Jeff, real quick. We're getting some, getting some Twitch chatter saying that we they can't hear some of us. So, okay. let me see who's audio. Is. Yes, so I just need to be more confident on this because I could do that. Yes. Cool, cool, cool. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. yeah. So well, I I wouldn't. I wouldn't argue that hard for Batman either because it was number seven on my list, and I felt like it would. It also had the problem of um, you you sort of strayed from the main story too easily and couldn't get back to it so easily, and so um, there was just a sort of a loss of the narrative control right. in that game. I thought it, it's kind of hard for like it's it's just hard for like the third like as good those games are. It's hard for like the third or fourth one of those to really be something special. You know, like uh, Arkham Asylum Magic, because that was like the first time we were doing it. Then Arkham City, like, really opened it up. And, you know, in this one, it does like all the stuff that those games did well. Still, and it added some things like that Batmobile, which you could you could take or leave. But it's hard to just get that excited. Just like you know, the Call of Duty year was really good. Still, but it's hard to get excited for you know Call of Duty 15. It's hard to be passionate about that. Or even even again, kind of the same thing with Halo. Which I, I didn't play a lot of, of Halo. Do we have a, do we have a lot of support for Halo Six on here? Uh, Halo, Halo 5. Five, no. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> Whatever Halo got, that, that tells you something right there. Whatever Halo we're on now, jeez. If, if Halo were to go up there, it would be one of the first games that I would probably ask to get eliminated. Like, that's that's where I'm at with Halo. I I would put Splatoon up there before I would put Halo. Mm-hmm. Um, Honestly, yeah. I, I think, you know, part of my list is about how much time I put into these games as well. And so that's why... Oh, that's why Until Dawn is way up there, but also um, Total War Attila, which you know none of you guys have even heard of, right? Is, <laughs> um, is I put 461 hours into that game this year, and you know didn't play a lot of other stuff because I was having fun with it. I think that's part of your your decision making that should happen too. Is you know some of these games may be you know routine to other people, uh, but if you put all your hours into it this year, it held your attention over these other new games that are supposed to be innovative and, you know, capture your attention. All right, so we have a, a list of 11 right now, you said, Jeff? Yeah, let's, yeah. before before we move on, let's yeah. look at the bottom of the list. Is there anything else we move up? Until Dawn, Splatoon, um, let's see. Well, uh, how many of you would move up Bloodborne? Because I would. See, I'm I like, I don't know, I like Bloodborne, Bloodborne but... Four. Yeah, I liked Bloodborne, but it's not... I, I don't know why... I, and I'm not really into um, the Dark Souls series. I, I don't know why it's not, like, a higher thing for me. I don't know why it didn't really stick with me more. I, I did like... You know what it was a little bit? Was I liked the first half of the game more than the second. I liked the first half where it really was that kind of, like, Charles Dickens-style London setting. And then, kind of, after a bit, it just started looking a bit more Dark Souls gothic fantasy for me and that's that does, that seems like a small complaint i don't know that doesn't really fully articulate why it didn't ultimately matter more for me but it if it was like in my top 10 to be lower for me see i thought narratively speaking it was the best of the souls games so again like that comparison i can't like i don't really play a whole lot of the souls and honestly if i I'm trying to remember the narrative. I remember the narrative was cool because it was, you know, it was pretty minimal ultimately, and that was neat. But I, again, I don't know if it stuck with me necessarily. Well, I'm gonna put Bloodborne up there because it probably should be. I, I I liked it. It wasn't my yeah. favorite. It's not actually not even on my top ten, but it's probably like my number eleven, uh, maybe twelve. Um, but I think Jason's right. It probably should be up there. So, uh, I'm sorry, I just hit my mic. I think, but I think from this point, we could maybe forget the rest of the list and just focus on the twelve. Uh, no, does everyone no, agree? Not, not quite, not quite. Okay, all right, Dean, let me uh-uh. have Let's hear it. No, no. Well, you Dean have, Twist. I, you don't have Until Dawn up there, do you? No, I don't, yeah. Let's put it up there. Then. Like, and I, like, I know you said it was your number one, so. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised by something by this list, though, that, like, there's no... There doesn't appear to be any independent games unless... Well, Undertale. Undertale. Undertale's What's like that? the independent game. Which one? Undertale. Undertale. Oh, Undertale, all right, all right. You can, and I, I you think know, Ori's kind of... say that, you know... Ori's kind of independent. Independent developer. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm. The Witcher 3 is made by an independent developer, kind of. You know, even though they got, well, like, a paradox to help send out the boxes. Right. You know, <laughs> I guess, it was I guess all should... raised, the money was raised on Kickstarter. The development was just there. They were their own publisher for the mm. digital... Okay. Yeah. I, so, no, yeah, I think, but with Steven, is there any other independent like, game you would bring up? Like something made by two or three or four people. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Steven, is there any other independent games you would put on there? No, I'm just thinking of, like, of like my games of the year from the past, and, and, like, I keep thinking about Papers, Please, and I'm, I'm just, I feel a little disappointed that I can't find something like that. I think, I mean, you probably, you haven't played Undertale, right? No, I haven't gotten a chance. I think you'll be. Undertale, I think. I think that'll scratch the same sort of itch you're talking about. I think Undertale's a better game. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, I think Papers Please is a questionable as a, as a fun game experience. It's like an important game experience, but it's. Hey Jeff, real, real quick, not to derail you, but you're getting specific complaints that people can't hear you. Yeah, they can. They still not hear me. I'm. I'm. Cause I'm how long ago was that? Is, did that just happen? Uh, not too long ago. Just it just happened. I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll keep working on that. Can um just talk yourself, get closer to your mic or something? Yeah. It, can they? It, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Just suck less, Jeff. God. No, right. You're awful. All right. Um. Let me <laughs> see. Let me bring up the mic. Yeah. Okay. Sound right. Okay. Um. Well, let's <laughs> let, we'll test that out. Let's go ahead and move on to the to the top list. Now. Elimination so round. Here's, here's my thing. So I'm gonna throw a hand grenade. Oh no. So, Do it. boom. Only a two hours sleep, huh, Jason? Yes, only two hours of sleep. So my hand grenade is 
What about games that have expansions that kind of re-change what the game is, even though it came out a year before? And I'm not, you know, Destiny the Taken King is the obvious example here. But I'm right. also talking about games like Hearthstone and Path of Exile. Their expansions this year have vastly changed those games. I, uh, it's kind of yeah, it's a difficult question to answer. I remember people would struggle with this even with World of Warcraft. Like, do you like when like the first expansions for that were hitting out was like you know was this World of Warcraft could that be Game of the Year in two thousand seven and stuff like that? And yeah, it's I I think if one like really really changed something and improved it a lot, I can maybe hear the argument. But I don't know. Like like there's just been things that have changed it, but maybe not fundamentally. Like I, the game I played the most this year by far is Hearthstone. So I cannot always understand the argument that Hearthstone was my favorite game this year in a way, but just but still somehow I can't like call it game of the year. I just don't I still just can't identify it with like 2015 in some weird way. Why not? And uh, Game of Thrones was an example of one that started coming out last year and st- and finished yeah. coming out this year, right? So. Right. It's yeah, rules are changing. It's it is getting complicated to to to, to like make this as set a thing anymore. Especially, you know, the mobile games like if I take at the one game experience I enjoyed the most from beginning to end, it's Hearthstone League of Explorers. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. But again, it's... it's but um, Yeah, I mean, but again, what can I call Hearthstone League of Explorers my game of the year? I mean, it was ultimately a, you know, three-hour, maybe, you know, four or five-hour thing, and it added new cards to a game that was already great, that was, all, you know, just built upon it. But I would say it made it better because you take a look at sure. what it's done with its changes to its meta game and how it has completely brought new decks to what has been a very stale year for Hearthstone. You know, if it wasn't for the change before BlizzCon on the nerf to the Warsong Commander, you know, we would have had a stale meta for six months. It's almost like we need that we do if we need at least like a category for this kind of thing now, right? Like, right. Maybe not most improved game, but like best the, not a best game expansion, but, but just like the like, best the, I know, the best like live ops game, like the best game that's like living from a previous year into 2015 still, or the yeah. best game like the best legs, some, something like that. It, the, and so many of those games are. I mean, some of the most played games this year stuff played. like League of Legends and um, Counter Strike and. Minecraft. I mean, that's still stuff that's getting as much playtime as anything. It's well, it's you weird. take a look at so you know the best let's game look, update. You yeah. take a look at Destiny: The Taken. You hated Destiny, Mike. I you, did. You hated it. You thought it was boring. You thought it was trash. You played The Taken King, and you loved it. I love the take. That was that. Yeah, and I know you said that's the obvious example. And it, honestly, if I thought there was maybe more Destiny players on it, I might have argue for that on the top 10 list more, but like I'm not arguing for it too much because it would probably be lower, but that completely turned that game's fortunes around. It's because made that so much more playable and better. Why I'm playing Destiny is because your reviews, you know, made such a case to, to, to play it. And I've enjoyed what I've played with the Tiki King. I haven't gotten through all of it so right. far, but I've really enjoyed it. And, you know, you know, I played a little bit of the vanilla stuff before I used my you know little token and then Went straight to the right. Taken King, and the yeah, stuff before it was okay. You know, it was, yeah. I had a couple of really cool experiences, but um, the stuff afterward was, is definitely a lot better. Right. Okay, but yeah. real quick, real, does, let's... The take, does the Taken King do two things and making it worthy? Number one, it's just on its own a really great expansion, but number two, it remakes it completely remakes the reputation of a game. Yeah, that's right. all. That stuff is it, it definitely does that. But does that make does would you bump any game from the top list to put Destiny up there? Like let's, I, mean, I let's, would. Let's just agree right now that that all those games that are still alive from previous years, World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, Destiny. Let's say they all could count towards this list. What games from the top list would you bump to put up Destiny or Hearthstone? I mean, nothing. That, not except for stuff I haven't played, which isn't fair. I uh, I don't know if I would. Anything. I would bump Fallout Four. Fallout 4 is interesting. We could, yeah, maybe we should talk about Fallout 4 right now because it's. I feel like it's a game that everyone liked and enjoyed, but just it's nothing, nothing sticky about it. Right. There's nothing important about it. It's not well, one of the four games I said I'd fight for. Because you're going to be playing it for hours and hours and hours. Now the question is: Is there anything that elevates it above New Vegas or Fallout 3? Like the big difference was kind of the building stuff, which was. Fun, but ultimately, I ultimately kind of ignored it. It just so quested. 
did did the crafting, did the building, did that add to your narrative of your character and so, the it, wasteland? It did the so one thing I, I mean. Cool, yeah. you guys, so I mean, I did the whole thing with Mama Murphy and stuff like that, and I I have more 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 ownership of this Bethesda experience than I've ever had before. But at the same time, I didn't say it's one of the four games I'm going to fight for. It's like right on the outside. I will be sad if it doesn't make our top ten, but I I'm not going to like. I'm not going to struggle to keep it there against if there's a if there's a tide from you so, guys saying it's probably one we should cut. I'm not going to fight against it. I don't think. We, we, so I would I would um, you know I'm still wandering around in Fallout 4 and haven't gotten very far at all. But uh, the combat system is kind of the same and it has never really been that appealing to me. So, <laughs> so it's hard for me to to really you know just. Just keep going with that one, and and with you know like the Phantom Pain as well, because um, you know there there are other combat games that are so much more enjoyable to me, and um, and so that's that's kind of like a big strike against it. I I, I kind of want to keep going just to explore what's going on and see what else is out there, but um, but this is like a a fundamental sort of like block yeah. for me. So, see, are we, know, I can, so I can think about Fallout Four so far for me is when you come to down to the quests, you know, there, there's some good quests, but there's nothing that is stands out as memorable, such as, like, you know, the Tree Man from Fallout 3. I, I don't know. All the Valentine stuff stood out for me. So, I mean, oh, so, it, it is one yeah, of those games where it's easy to miss good the good quests. stuff. The Silver Shroud quest, I think, stood out. Silver Shroud is incredible as well. There's good stuff yeah. in there. It's just easy to miss. Right, and the companion. One thing I will say did better than three or New Vegas was companions, which that's a whole different thing. And I don't know if that's enough to elevate it, but I I think there's enough derision here. And I think you know we gotta start getting something out here. Can we maybe we should get Fallout Four. I, off the list. I, I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay I think I'm the one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight for Fallout Four just because I think it has provided some innovation to the open world category. Yeah, but we gotta. I, yeah, but we need to start getting. I, but Jason, I think you might, you might be the now. only one. I'm at, I. We gotta start getting things off the list. We gotta, we gotta end. Remember, we have to end here with one. So yeah, well, yeah. We, we at least gotta get down to ten first, and then we can start sorting things. So okay, well, let's let's go to let's go before we kick off Fallout Four, Middle Gear Solid Five. I I I'll make the case for five, maybe more so. Why it's maybe better than four? And um, Dean, I know you were you were saying that you had a similar problem with five. Middle Gear Solid Five, as you did with Fallout Four, and that the combat didn't get you. See, I have the kind of the opposite. I thought the Gameplay in Metal Gear Solid Five was maybe the best I've had in an, an open world game in a long time. The kind of mix of stealth and action, the the very open nature of it was great. And I think, for, uh, you know, on the technical side, I think Metal Gear Solid Five ran better than maybe any other uh, current gen game I played. Like you know, Fallout Four has a lot of technical issues. It doesn't really look that pretty sometimes. We can argue if that's important or not. But tech, tech, you know, tech wise, I think Metal Gear Solid Five blew that game away. My problems with Metal Gear Solid 5 are almost all, like, story problems. My problem like with Metal Gear 5 is twofold. Uh, mm -hmm. Number one, the story's stupid. <laughs> From what I've sure, yeah. <laughs> no one, I don't think anyone disagrees with that. <laughs> the story is just plain stupid. And second, all these games, if you're not familiar, are they new things, or they're from series that you can just jump in and play without needing to know what's happened beforehand or being familiar with it. You can't do that Metal Gear Solid 5. You need to know stuff about Metal Gear. Yeah, no, for sure a little Which bit. Which is Especially, also one of the most help that. baffling narratives this side of Battlestar Galactica. Right. But, but it does, isn't that kind of a Metal Gear Solid thing? It's like you, you don't necessarily have to play the other Metal Gear Solids because they all don't make yeah, yeah. I think sometimes you like you you assume that this but, one makes more sense if you played the other ones, and then nah, not really. So so so, do we want to laud a game for not making sense? I don't. Again, the, yeah, I, think, I think that's a no factor. game makes sense. None of these games make sense. Rise of the Tomb Raider has a terrible story. Um, it does. Witcher three. It's I don't. Really I don't care about problem. Witcher three story. Black Ops three. Yeah, hey, come I, I on. Had... I thought that uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider had a reasonable story. A reasonable, so it was, it was, but come on. We're, I we're not lauding a single one of these games except for maybe Pillars of Eternity and Undertale. maybe maybe Undertale and Ori. But those are like, those all, well, they're not like, like I thought the dumb story in Star Wars last night had a better story than any of the games we're talking don't about here. Don't spoil it, don't spoil <laughs> it. Oh my god. You're gonna get fired. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. Alright, well how about, how, how about we do this? How about... What, how many of us are there? There's there's five, right? Maybe we could just vote. 
Well, Fallout 4 or Metal Gear Solid 5, well, which one do we want uh, off can, can I make my case for Until Dawn unless you guys, you know, have Well, no, hang on, hang on. Before we, that, or, before we do that, okay. before we do that, let's decide uh, Fallout 4's fate. Uh, Fallout 4 specifically, because I think we, we gave it its due. We talked about it a, a, a good amount here. Uh, I don't think anyone else is going to make any new arguments for it. Uh, who wants it to be on the list still? Uh, just kind of put your hand up to the camera or whatever. Yeah, I I think we got to get rid of it. Nope. Out. Sorry, Jason. Yep, Jason. I think we're I think we got to lose Fallout Four. Three votes since I'm the boss. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm just gonna put it. I'll put it below the ah. list. And if somehow we decide that we hate the rest of these games, then it gets a very nice participation trophy. Yes, absolutely. So 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 Jason management tip for 2016. Make sure the boss has more power. Exactly. Yeah, you should have <laughs> yeah. decided that before this. Okay. Um. I, I want to move on to real quick. I know we uh, were talking about Metal Gear Solid Five. I want to leave it on the list because I actually like that game a lot too. Um, uh, but let's talk about Black Ops Three. Uh, is this really Jeff's in charge because he controls the spreadsheet? That's right. I, I can just yeah, do whatever right. I want. Let's get the Super hey. Mario Maker up to the top. Hey, oh, it's my a Google, it's Black a Google Ops Doc. Right? Um, yeah, you guys can all control the Google Doc too. I think um, Black yeah, Ops Three. Way. Is it really like? It's the one I've played. I am a huge Call of Duty. I know I played more Call of Duty than probably all you guys combined. I know for a fact that's probably true. Okay, okay, Stephen. I'm sorry. You're right. I forgot about your 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 deal. Okay, but a thousand hours in Modern Warfare, a thousand hours in you know the original Black Ops, a thousand hours in, in Modern Warfare Two. Uh, Black Ops Three. I play it. I'm. Is it? Is it really going to be on this top ten list? I don't think it should be. So I I agree actually. Um... It's a fun I, game. I will. I'll give you that. But it's not even the best shooter on this list. Splatoon. It's not the best multiplayer game. Rise of or uh, uh, Rocket League. Like. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm at the point with Black Ops and with Modern Warfare where it's like it's very obvious. It's there's some tweaks, but it's still very much very similar to the other games. And I don't feel like it really broke enough ground for it to take up the spot of something else that probably did a lot more this year. So, well, um, I would say don't you know don't forget about the uh, weird uh, scenes, psychedelic scenes, dream scenes in the single player campaign. You know that made it different from any other Call of Duty. Um, right, but maybe not different from other other. We've seen that kind of stuff in other games, I, and I will agree it was like a nice like a Far Cry, yeah. But yeah, um, it was a nice thing to throw in into there to make it feel fresher. And my experience with this game is weird because I played the campaign and really didn't touch the multiplayer much at all. And I enjoyed the campaign. I don't mm -hmm. know if it was, you know, great enough a campaign to merit some sort of game of the year. Yeah, and but personally, I'm not I'm not willing to get rid of anything else to keep Black Ops 3 on the list. And I, I mean, is anyone? Uh, well, I mean, multiplayer, I'd argue that it was strong because uh, it actually keeps uh, sort of mediocre players in it for longer, I think, because... There's these things like the specialists, you know, everybody gets uh, some kind of crack at, at having yeah, a, cool. a nice ability during a multiplayer match. You get it at least once per match, right? And then you can, you can also get these uh, score streaks um, uh, fairly, you know, fairly easily. And so all of the things that usually are out of reach for a mediocre player are actually pretty uh, doable and accessible in this multiplayer. And so... You know, I'm at level 49 in multiplayer now, and that's you know I, I probably hit prestige, you know, before the New Year's, and and so I've never actually done that in a Call of Duty game before. It usually takes me until like February before I will get that. Mm. I okay, so I think you've made a case for it definitely being a, a good game, a good Call of Duty game, um, and I, I think most of us probably agree with that. Uh, at the same time, I don't think it's going to be on the top 10. Um, yeah, I, I gotta agree. Someone, as someone who's put a lot of time into it as well, like to be honest, I don't think it's done enough to knock something else out of the list. All right, I'm moving it down with Fallout Four. Okay, so let's see. Let's uh, let's, let's see what we have now. We have Pillars of Eternity, Super Mario Maker, Rocket League, Splatoon, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Ori in the Blind Forest, Witcher Three, Metal Gear Solid Five, Undertale. Until Dawn and Bloodborne. Um, so now that, Pil Pil that, that's eleven, right? Right. Pillars is interesting because now who here actually played a lot of Pillars? Because I, I I really that didn't. I kind of feel that's bad about that's it. Jason. That's uh, kind of Jason's thing, right? Yeah. And but I'm willing to like have this list have at least one game that we're all 
Super 4. So, Jason, why don't you lay out the case for Pillars of Attorney so we can give it its due and probably decide to keep it on the list. Let's go ahead and hear it. Okay, it's his, it's his so Ori. Yeah. for Pillars is, is going to be twofold. First of all, I think it's the best game to come out of Kickstarter. And I think that's important. Shovel Knight. <laughs> that's a good game, too. Where's the Shovel Knight? Shovel Knight is good. <laughs> it's better than Shovel Knight. It's a fantastic, huge role-playing experience. It's not an open world, which is, I think, important because so many RPGs now are turning to open worlds. And it's nice to have one that isn't on this list. It has a, I, I really enjoy the story as you're going through... I really like the way it innovates on a combat system for a role-playing wow. game. The way it uses armor and resistance. The way <clears throat> it changes things up with how you have to look at your abilities and how they stack up for what's your life, what's your resistance, what's your health. Those are really good. It looks great. It's a fantastic callback to a great series of games in Baldur's Gate in Icewind Dale. And, and it, does it make it uh, easier for players who never played those games as well? Because it's one I'm interested in, in playing. I just did Yeah, you don't need to have played any of those games. You just need to understand what, you know, what a top-down isometric mm -hmm. looks like. But you do need to study its systems. It's, it, it, it takes some time to That's learn good. how that, how that thing, works. Yeah. yeah, no, it is a good thing. It is a good thing. Uh, it's got if, of all the games on this list, I think it's got the best writing. Um, Which might not be a too hard to accomplish, really. Um, that in The Witcher yeah. Three, kind of neck and neck yeah. place. Some quests are not as good, you know, writing wise as they are Witcher Three. Um, you know, there's not a quest here that's better than the Bloody Baron from Witcher Three. Yeah. Okay, you know, so I'm uh, I'm starting to get worried. Um, I'm looking at the list, and. I'm not sure which one to cut because we're we're at eleven. Oh, damn it, we're at eleven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we need to cut one to get to ten. Um, well, okay. I, 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 somebody, uh, somebody want to make a case for Super Mario Maker because yes. that's not on my list. Man. Super Mario but... Maker was uh, the <laughs> the best experience I had with games this year. It was, um, it turns not only the act of playing, not only the act of creation. But the act of competing specifically with another person into this incredible meta game, where uh, when I was reviewing it, I was playing the review build. Uh, That's where I had the best experience with this, but I've had similar stuff since. Uh, there was one guy who kept making these awesome, really challenging levels, and I started playing them and I was streaming them, and he would he would make even more challenging levels, and we started going back and forth, and it created this this unique experience I've never had with games before. Uh, the fact that the game enables that at all, but it doesn't just enable it, it like is makes it really easy and fun and rewarding to sort of make these levels and play these levels. Uh, it feels like the the most familiar game on the list, but it also feels like the most different. Um, Jeff, let me I, ask you, would you would you put Mario Maker above Splatoon? Because I, I wouldn't. I would take Splatoon. I would. I, I, I would. I, would. Um, Splat I love yeah. Splatoon. I love Splatoon, but I actually like uh, when I... When I was honest with myself at the end of the year and I looked back, uh, in terms of games that I just turned on to play multiplayer, it wasn't Splatoon anymore. It was Rocket League. So I yeah. I put Splatoon below, below Rocket League and I put Super Mario Maker up at the top of my list. So, But the one thing Splatoon I don't think is getting enough credit for, it. I see this all over, I thought Splatoon's single-player campaign was surprisingly excellent. Like, I thought that was, like, straight-up Nintendo, like, platforming, yeah. fun, great about bosses. Let's, let's talk about Super Mario Maker. Let me, yeah. Let me not pick up on the meta game. I'm looking at it from the opposite end of the angle. I've been using it to teach my five-year-old how to play platforming games. Yeah. And I'll make these basic, simple levels, and then I'll build on them, introducing a new mechanic. And then I'll introduce a new mechanic. And then I'll introduce a new mechanic. And what Nintendo has cleverly done here, which I think no one is talking about, is that they've made a game that you can use to teach people how to get into its most important and most valued series, Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. You know, you can teach anybody to play a Mario game with this much easier than you could with the other Mario games. Um, the second thing is this thing has a meta game, as Jeff was talking about, that no other game has. Uh, all you got to do is look at Patrick clapping over at Kotaku and the way he's going through levels. And the, yeah, and that's just that's just like the biggest example though. That sort of back and forth between two people making a level and one playing the level, 
that is happening all over the place. That's a huge thing on YouTube. It's a huge thing on Twitch. Mm -hmm. uh, people, uh, and it, every time and I streamed should... Super Mario Maker, like the viewers are like, play my level, play my level, and I'll play them. And it, it's exciting because it's really fun to watch someone play your level. And we've had tons of level maker le level making games before, and none of them have actually succeeded at getting to the point where people are like, my favorite part of this is just making something and then watching other people either struggle with it or figure out my little puzzles and stuff like that. And to give players, gamers who have been playing games for so long, the chance to feel what it's like to make something, uh, that's that's unique. Uh, and for me, it's Super Mario Maker has to be on the list. I would I would cut my other three games before I would cut Super Mario Maker. And on top of that, mm -hmm. it shows that it's a huge surprise because it's the biggest online innovation of the year and who did it nintendo yeah yeah i mean i can i i mean it's maybe not like my number one but i definitely wouldn't i would not vote to get it off the list that's for sure but then that's, I that's why the, i said i was scared oh i'm sorry go ahead steven i think it's the most important release of what you have there for sure because it, it like you said it's emp it's empowered people to discover game design and designing games and designing levels without the high barrier of, of getting there. Like, it's mm -hmm. very accessible. And, it, and, and who knows, you know, our future big-name game designers could be starting just off of Mario Maker. Yep, I agree. But th so it was this conversation that made me scared when I looked at the list because I know Dean loves Until Dawn. Um, I know, I know <laughs> Mike and myself like Metal Gear. Um, I know... Well. I know, I know um, Chase likes pillars, and I would drop I would drop Bloodbird over pillars for me, if we're getting down to having to drop a game. Yeah, I mean, again, I liked Bloodborne, but out of yeah, yeah, I that, that's the one that I would drop. I just want to make sure everyone else is okay with it because, like, here again, my four games are Super Mario Maker, Rocket League, Splatoon, and Rise of the Tomb Raider. Do I have but, support for each one I of those games? But I see that was a reservation because I detest Metal Gear Solid Five. Okay. I just detest it. See, so, maybe I'll tell you I, what. I, I as much as I love Mario Kart Five, if other you know, I, I got a little bit from Dean, a little bit from Jason. I mean, if other people feel that strongly against it, and like I said, the game has enough problems that it can't. You know, like I can understand why it can't be game of the year. That's fine. I, I tell you, I would put it well, above. Blood here's Board, the thing. Look, it, above sounds, it sounds like we're we've reached something here. Yeah. What do we think is a better example of great game design and good storytelling through that design? and innovation from that design. Do we feel it's Bloodborne, or do we feel it's Metal Gear Solid 5? Uh, real quick, I think it's Metal Gear Solid 5, specifically because when this game came out, I was I laughed at it. I'm like, there's no way this is going to be a good video game. They spent too much time, too much money, too much hype. And it comes out, and it delivers on this open-world espionage thing that I just never thought would be fun. Uh, and it, it worked. And like you could solve all these problems and really clever ways like two people can go at the same thing and come up with different ideas that no one else in the world has ever come up with um where i bloodborne uh i agree it's a good series i do like the the you know pathways through difficulty and having to push through that and making yourself better to get through things uh but we've had that in dark souls and dark souls 2 and maybe uh, it was better in like dark souls um so for me i would cut bloodborne before i'd cut metal gear solid so, do we feel that the innovation that Metal Gear brought to itself, which is the open world... And not just to itself, to AAA video games. Like, the fact that a AAA video game well, that's this expensive could be this innovative is yeah, is impressive. Okay, now, now open world AAA has been done. I don't no, think yeah, it's yeah, just about like that. open world. No. Yeah. It's, no, it's but, about the fact that it's such a I'm huge game. I'm talking about to its series. The big innovation for Metal Gear Solid Five to its series is its open world, correct? It, it goes beyond just to... It, it's it's series. It's it's about kind of the it, it's about the variety of like what you can do and all these crazy things. And, it, it, and it's like outside of skill trees or something, or like you know you unlock this skill or or whatever. Well, because so, it's not like just you see that mountain in the background, you can go to it. That's not what this game's about. This game is you see that base and you see your inventory and you see your your companion. Now figure out how to solve this thing yourself and have fun. Like that is uh, that's different. Mm -hmm. So, but but do you feel well, that's different than say the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, where you're also told, you know, oh, okay, well, you know, here's some ancient hall of the dwarves, go into it and go figure it out. Um, Completely. Yeah, I think it's different. But I think ultimately you're you're going to go through the you're going to fight monsters either with spells or a sword, 
maybe you'll pick a lock somewhere and, and you know, find a shortcut. But no, I think it's very different, Metal Gear. Mm-hmm. And what what you described there about uh, you know going after a base? I mean, I, I I feel like I was doing a lot of that in Mad Max, and that's why I like Mad Max. Yeah, it, it, but it Mad Max has other problems. Doesn't, it doesn't sound as unique as you know you might think. No, I, I, I know what you mean, but it just seems like so, every idea you come up with works. Like that's what it, that's the Metal Gear yeah. Solid. Are we also agreed that? We would rather keep Metal Gear Solid Five and drop Bloodborne for games like Rocket League and Ori and the Blind Forest. Or I think Rocket. I mean, Rocket League is the Rocket, best multiplayer game. Rocket right Rocket League for sure. Ori is kind of my darling. I like Ori um, a lot I guess, too. I guess, okay, yeah. Mike, make your case for Ori. I like Ori better than Metal Gear. So let me just say that. So Mike, you're maybe that will help. Yeah. Okay. I think. Um. I think from a gameplay um, perspective, you know how sometimes a two D platformer is harder. It feels it's hard to kind of get those. The can't right. Ori just felt so smooth, and everything about that game was just like silky, buttery, delicious, <laughs> rich. I don't know why I'm turning into food. I'm hungry. Uh, just, <laughs> smooth. just it, you know, all that running and jumping. And, and again, I like very athletic platformers. You know, with the wall jumping and the double jumping. And this one had like kind of a different thing too. Maybe a little bit like uh the that lucha game. Now I can't remember that came up. A bit ago, or another movie. Movie. Yeah. yeah, but you can like grab the, you can grab onto projectiles yeah, and you can launch off of them. But and again, I know you know looks on anything, but it can't be stated yeah. how good that game looked. We, you know, we say it all the time. We said it was like you know stuff like Wind Waker all looks like a cartoon, and we were kind of you know maybe not you know we were kind of exaggerating a little bit. This thing just looks like a cartoon. Yeah, like it, lo- it looks like an animated film on on a big screen. Also, it's mm-hmm. on top of that. You were saying like the uh, athleticness, uh, it makes it feel. Like, just so imminently playable. Every time I played right. the game, I just couldn't put it down until I was, like, literally, like, falling asleep. Because mm-hmm. it's just... You could just keep playing it because it's just... It's so inviting in every way. Not just the looks, it, but it feels great. The jumping's great. The enemy combat's yeah. great. Even it just, all makes sense. It, it's little, like, save system. Yeah. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. Where you literally, like, drop down your save point, and then you can go back to it. And the, the soundtrack... One of the few soundtracks I've actually, like... Sought out and listened to this year. It's one of the lot. To the most right now. Beautiful. Okay. And again, it has its emotional beats. It may be like the overall story is kind of but like the emotional beats to it. Like that whole prologue. Uh, that's what I love about this game too. I can show people who aren't really interested in the games. I just like, but I know they like Miyazaki films or something. And I just show them like the first ten minutes of Ori. They're like, wow, that's really cool. You know, they get it. So are you so saying that's my that Ori you, case? You're saying that Ori's so good, your mother liked it. <laughs> <laughs> My, my mom's more of like a like Cinderella. She's not so much spirited away. I don't know. I don't know what she would think of Ori. Might be a little weird for her. So Ori's staying on the list. Uh, that brings so, us back. That brings us back to Metal Gear Solid and Bloodborne. Well, What's that, Stephen? Yeah, go ahead, Stephen. Can I make a suggestion? Can I've actually been. I've actually. Re- this is. There's a game on this list that I've really been wanting to play, and I've been dying to hear Dean's sort of explanation of it. I want to hear about um, Until Dawn. Okay. Until, Until Dawn should yeah. stay. Over Metal Gear Solid and um, Bloodborne. Yeah, th- that's yeah, fair. I, but if it is his one game, that uh, it probably should end up on the list. But go ahead, Dean. Okay. Well, I, I can make a you know case that this is you know uh, interesting on a lot of fronts. Like it's it's not what it seems, and what it seems is a B movie horror game, right? Uh, with you know eight teenagers, um, you know some of them very sexy. Uh, they get trapped in a lodge. Uh, there's a killer among them, and you're trying to save them. You know, like you know, um, you know, if everybody lives until dawn, then you you've, you've done your job as a gamer, right? So, so that's you know, that's not necessarily that's going to turn off a lot of people right there, right? I mean, people who don't like horror games, uh, but you know, they they layered in all these innovations, like the butterfly effect, you know, which means that very small decisions you make early on in the game. Like, say, you know, whether you decide to shoot a squirrel with a gun or not, right, will actually affect uh, what happens much later in the game and, you know, whether or not your character um, that you're playing is going to survive, right? There's also, there's also a plot twist that makes, um, you know, the basic story of the game uh, also not what it seems. Uh, and, and it turns into something much scarier than, than what you have sort of in the sort of, you know, Basic description of the game, uh, and and then you can replay these things, you know, because of the butterfly effect again. 
Uh, you have eight characters. You know what you decided uh, that determined their fate. Uh, you go back to it, and you try to um, play it in a different way. And and then, you know, they can still wind up dying, but maybe later on in the branching point. So there's so many branching points in this game uh, that, you know, that's really good. And then the act, the acting is just well done, and the facial animations are, are perfect. Like, you know, this game actually does get over the uncanny valley. Um, nothing among, you know, the, the way the faces are um, looks fake. I mean, the, the only thing that you would argue um, doesn't look real is just the way they move. Like, you know, sometimes they're, they're just sort of walking a little too woodenly down a, down a corridor or something like that. Um, but uh, so, all, so all these different things, I think, uh, you know, just just make you know they brought in Hollywood writers to to do this, and also some of these characters, they're not what they seem as well, and so so the characters um, that you think are really shallow, you know, they actually may have something uh, about them that you find out later in the game is really you know, wow, that's kind of interesting. So so that's my case for it. it. You know, it's a game where it looks like you know it can be easily judged as a as a simple game. It's got some innovations around it, uh, and it, it turns out to be um, very sort of unexpected and very replayable. Well, I think it should probably stay on the list in that case, in light of that. Um, I think the characters are stupid, but, but it's got some fun I think there's a horror movie. It's supposed to be stupid. Yeah, if they weren't stupid, then it wouldn't be as fun. I mean, you know, it has things like jump scares, which are, you know, kind of uh, a, tra a trashy rip way to, to you know, Get you, get you, whatever, and then uh, those, you know, some of those characters, though, um, uh, you know, they change from what they seem so, like at the beginning. So, so Jeff, my question: are, So, what are we trying to do right okay, now? Okay, so here, yeah, like a list. Are we trying to find like the one game? Well, right now we're just trying to get down to ten, and then we're going to start ordering them. To, to well, how many? How many do we have right now? We have eleven. So here's what, okay. Remind me who is trying to keep Bloodborne on the list because it's not me anymore. I've decided. Not going to defend it at all. Jason, I think, it, is it you, Jason? It's me, but like I said, I would make room. If it comes down to cutting Ori or Rocket League or Super Mario Maker or Pillars, I'd rather have those than Bloodborne. I think we got to get rid of Bloodborne then. Yeah, Bloodborne's a great game. It but... is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Maybe next year we could do 25 games. <laughs> yeah, that'll <laughs> Okay, right. guys, we have 10. Um, Hooray. So I think I just I'm gonna put Super Mario Maker on the top and then we're done. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how about we do this? Let's take a look at those ten and all of us kind of order them the way we think they should, and we can start with me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's hear it. <laughs> because I kind of already have done this. Okay. So of these games, my top game would be Super Mario Maker, followed by. Witcher 3, Pillars of Eternity, Rocket League, Undertale, Ori in the Blind Forest, Until Dawn, Rise of the Terminator, Platoon, and of course, makes it pretty easy to see what would be last there. Okay. So that last would be Metal Gear Solid. Okay. Um. And it's really hard because, for me. Super Mario Maker, The Witcher 3, and both could be my game of the years for very different reasons. Right. Um, Super Mario Maker, because of what we already talked about, of the innovation of that game, the joy of that game. The Witcher 3, because it, it not only is it the best open-world role-playing game I've ever played, but I think the Bloody Baron quest is my favorite role-playing quest of the year, for sure. Let's uh let yeah while we're doing that let's talk more about Witcher three. Does any, anyone else want to throw stuff out there for Witcher three because that's one that didn't get its hooks into me the way I thought it would and I think it had a lot to do with the 
controls didn't feel great to me, which I know is a, a crappy thing. I know a lot of people complain when I, when people say stuff like that, but I just it was a barrier for me that I couldn't really push too far past. So I only played like five or six hours of The Witcher Three. I think Witcher would What's after here? my personal, after my personal darling of Ori. I think Witcher would be my pick. Um, and I haven't played any of the other Witchers kind of going into this, but you know, it, it's kind of one of those things where I think we've we're, we're in this weird place with like these open world role playing games like Fallout Four. They've gotten very they got a mainstream in a way where things it's kind of been simplified in a way. And what I liked about Witcher Three was that it kept some of the maybe good simplification things, but other parts of it kind of felt more old school to me. Um, you know, like, right. like the very, very intense kind of crafting and all these, you know, it wasn't afraid to have like just a bunch of systems and subsystems. Um, and the scale of it was just uh, ridiculous. You know, like comparing it to something like Dragon Age Inquisition, which I thought was a good game then, it's like when you play Witcher 3 now, it almost just makes that look made, not amateur, it's just maybe harsh, but it, it kind of blows something like that out of the water to me. Okay. I, um, in general, I agree with Jason's list, but I would put Rise of the Tomb Raider uh, a much higher. Um, and that should we talk about? Maybe we should talk about Rise of the Tomb Raider more because that's a game that seems like all of us enjoy to a, a certain degree. Uh, yeah, I, I I think uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider for me was uh, one of the big surprises. I I I think it's everything in that game from the big set pieces. Um, the the visuals were outstanding uh it felt nice and the open world stuff was just uh, it, every time i i found a, a one of those secret caverns or whatever the f secret tombs uh that was, was the best part of the game it was the best tombs. and and then it was like it was such a great change of pace it's such a great change up to go from pushing through the story to being like oh man there's a secret tomb around here i'm gonna go find that and I'm gonna go do that, and then once you get done with that, you like almost always get a cool new thing, and you're like, all right, well, I'm gonna go back into the adventure now because I got this cool new thing. It's gonna make stuff easier or open up more stuff, and it just like it had such great pace because of that. Uh, it it was and yeah, it was easily one of my top three or four games. Um, I th I also thought that like as far as open worlds go, it was just properly managed where you always knew where to go next for the story. Right? Uh huh. Um, in Batman, that's problem. Some that's like problem open world games because you can get off course so easily, which is part of the fun. Right. Mad Max. Yeah, the, Mad Max had a huge problem there. Right. So. Yeah, it was very cool how they kind of had like these segmented areas where, and like some of them would almost be more for like the story; they'd be a bit more linear. And I, I think it was kind of a cool way to to kind of have an open world game and give you those moments where if you want to explore, you can. But ultimately, still make it very focused in, in a good kind of way. It, you know, it's, I don't think every game needs to be like we have the biggest open world ever, and look how big this is. I, I think Tomb Raider is a good reminder that sometimes you can scale that back a bit and have a better experience for it. But so what don't what don't we like about Tomb Raider? Is there anything like a, is there like a game breaker there or anything like that? Because again, it was a game that did so much right. I feel like I suck at it. You suck at it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. The... Those games are so difficult for me to do, to to play effectively. I die a lot. I have issues, but I know that doesn't deter to me the quality of what it is. Just because I can't play it well. Um, let's. <laughs> Steven, you got to get closer to the mic. No, go ahead. Okay. Um. I think we should try to let's go ahead and maybe sort the list by like the top half and the bottom half. Um, I I think if the game only has one person supporting it, yeah, it should probably Personal be in the bottom. So that would be until dawn. That'd be oh my poor Ori pillars. It's probably Ori. No. Yeah, it's Ori. Well, I thought Jeff was supporting Ori as well. I I am, but not, not as my degree. not as strong as Mike is. Um. Well, you see, you see, I'll also support Ori, just not. Yeah. Okay. Mine. Okay, if that's the case, then it, then I think it might be in the top top five. Go yeah. Ori. Go Ori. All right. So, then, um, so then, until dawn. I mean, uh, the the ones that I would keep right now are Until Dawn, Rocket League, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Ori, Undertale, and Witcher Ooh. Three. The other four, I think, um, I had just general issues with. <laughs> okay. I feel like Undertale's the one we haven't really talked about very much. 
yeah, I, I, I like it, but I don't love it. Um, I think I think that might be the case with everyone here that's played it. Yeah, I, I wish I did like it as much as everyone else. You know, everyone keeps comparing it to Earthbound. I think that might be my problem. I'm like that one weird guy who doesn't really like Earthbound that much. Yeah. No, you're not. I... Okay, well, that's good to know. But I mean, I, I, fun, but... Yeah, I, I appreciate the hell out of Undertale. I just, I don't know how much it personally speaks to me, but I, yeah, I, I get it. I get why it's a big deal. What am I missing here? Undertale. And what's the uh, pillars? What's the what last game I'm missing over here? Metal Gear Solid. Okay, Metal so Gear, let's... Yeah. Does this look right in terms of the top five and the bottom five? Like, would anyone move anything from the bottom five here up to the top five? I would maybe try to make a case with Splatoon, but not too strongly. I think same, I'm okay. Yeah, same that's same here. Yeah, that looks like that looks good to me. Okay, so let's let's order this real quick. What's going to be number ten? Is it going to be Undertale because we're just we're not the strongest supporters? I I know the problem is is we we, we gave it a hundred because our reviewer fell in love with it, and I think that was a very personal review. I read the review; it was a very good case for the game. Uh, when, I would I, say... when I played it, I felt like it was um it couldn't quite speak to me because it was it's talking about some issues of uh, human frailty and stuff like that that I deal with in a very different way than this game deals with it. But I respect, uh, inc I, I think the game's incredible for, for existing, for talking about these uh, issues with uh, you know anxiety and personal relationships in a way that no other game really has before. So I'm I glad it's on the those, list. I think of those games, Pillars should go to number 10, just because Okay. What it tries to achieve is less than what those other games are trying to achieve. And it's it's, it's probably the most niche game on the list too. It's just not does, the you know, most niche. Okay. That's Undertale. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. All right, then I'm going to move pillars down. That's a good way to do this. But you know, still, you know, pillars being on our top ten games of the year, it's still quite an achievement for Obsidian there. Yeah, for sure. Right. So, okay. So pillars but, is down there. So then, um, Undertale would be nine. I I think okay. so. I know we have some Metal Gear haters here. And then Metal Gear Solid. Okay. Eight. Here's my question: Would Undertale be below until dawn? I think I, I yeah. I, I think it so, probably. Yeah. I know I haven't played until dawn, but Dean's description yeah. of everything I've heard makes it sound. Um, like a kind of fun game that you don't get a lot of, and I feel pretty good about recognizing it a little bit higher than Undertale, personally. Okay, so now the question is, of the next three, Metal Gear... I think Metal Gear's probably or... eight. Because Metal Gear's the one that like we were almost talking about cutting, right? Right, yeah. yeah. So then I think, then I think it's... It came, down, it came down to me being the only one who hated it. Right. Yeah, but still. Yeah, so... I got... well, as I much think, as I like it, Dean didn't almost... like it either. <laughs> As much as I like Metal Gear Solid 5, you still had almost convinced me, which is kind of yeah. insane. <laughs> so, until Dawn and Splatoon. So, I want Splatoon at 6. Uh, Splatoon that's my six. only... I agree, Splatoon at 6. Because uh, uh, that's a game that I would almost want to put in the top 5, personally. Yeah, that's like the one that, like, I, that's not on top 5. I'm like, oh. What I love oh, about Splatoon man. is that in a... <laughs> until, I'm just watching Until Dawn drop. You guys, you know. I'll... Yeah. So, Oh, we have yeah, to. I'm gonna go make my own list. <laughs> wait, no, wait. I mean, Mega, where's where's the Mega Man games at here? <laughs> oh, shut up. Okay. So Mega Man one, right? So, so here's one thing I want to say about Splatoon. I think it's very important. Yeah, let's hear it. So when I go when I go out shopping, and you see kiosks where people are playing Splatoon, Splatoon is the one game that you see that appeals to everybody. Yeah. It um it had that sort of Undertale push. What I really loved Undertale about it out. is one of my favorite moments of gaming this whole year. And this is gonna sound silly and sappy. You're gonna go wait a second. This doesn't sound like Grumpy Jason at all. Was watching this group of four girls play Splatoon and laughing and giggling and having so much fun and talking about painting things and painting each other and painting with the roller. And it was it was exceptional. And I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen four girls giggling and having so much fun in a store playing a game before. Well, speaking of uh, girls giggling, FIFA 16 with the female <laughs> athletes, uh, my girls were just giggling away when they were playing that. 
Yeah, with, with yeah, I can imagine that, that that game deserves it sort of uh, be on the same sort of innovation list. I think yeah. that we were talking about earlier. But but what what's cool about Splatoon is I can see you bringing that to Christmas, and playing it and Grandma enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and it's five year old enjoying it, and everyone in between Grandma and the five year olds enjoying it. And it's not just because it's uh, easy to play; it's also sort of visually appealing on a level right. that uh, in in a unique in a way that. Only a Nintendo can, Nintendo game can be, and it's also completely new for Nintendo. It's not using old characters, and it's sort of so like relieving that like oh my god, Nintendo can make new stuff, and it's just as good as the old stuff. Uh, I'm like I, I love Splatoon on that on that sort of level. It's it's really uh, oh my god, it's refreshing. Now now I want to argue for playing Splatoon at like five and putting Tomb Raider at six or something after hearing all this. I, I, I don't know if I'm complicating things now, but I just like now you remind me how much I love Splatoon. I know I. Well, I know. Like, no, um, no. This is it. This is the this is the bottom five. We're leaving it. We haven't talked about Splatoon though. We really haven't opened it up. Uh, Gotta be fair. I love uh, Rise uh, of the Tomb Raider though. Like, uh, I don't know if I love. I don't know if I love it as much. As Splatoon. You know, as a Call of Duty player, um, uh, <laughs> Splatoon was actually surprisingly hard for me to control. <laughs> did you do uh, the sticks or did you do motion controls? Uh, with sticks. Yeah. Uh, you had to turn those motion. The gamepad stick is helpful. actually kind of garbage like that's one of the things i discovered playing that game um okay so are we talking rise of the tomb raider at six and splatoon moves up to like what, that's what five? i would do that's what i would do i don't know you know i don't want to push everyone else to that if they don't agree you know what i i think splatoon six rise five because I, I really like you know as much as i have trouble playing it because i suck i really like how it chronicles laura croft Okay, in that case, that means that we've we've solidified the bottom five. And, okay, yeah. just, I, I just want to throw it out there. I love the fact that showing it shows Laura Croft as a very intelligent woman. Yeah, I... but the I mean the you know you mentioned that the story wasn't good, but I actually thought the story was good because of that reason, which is um, you know they they insert her father into it, right and. And so she's she's not just searching for this lost city, but you know she's trying to come to terms with actually not having a father as well. And that made it emotionally more interesting to me, and just well, a little more, you know, uh, of a, a deeper sort of um, I don't know uh, emotional story. Yeah, some of that came on a little strong for me personally, mm -hmm. but like, yeah, I like the characters. Uh, I liked her. She was okay as a character, and I liked uh, her. Her dude, her best friend, or whatever. Okay. But, gone from but how about how about this? Can we is, is Rise of Tomb Raider five? Then is that what we we're coming to, or do people you know, argue I'm arguing arguing that. that? I'm arguing that it's the best game left on the list, so I would okay. put it at number one. I, I I actually think it's better than. Uh, this is not going to go over, but I think it's better than Witcher. Um, oh, I don't. But right. I don't. Um, but I'm okay. But I'm not. I'm not as adamant on that because I didn't put enough time Let's in with the Witcher. So, Let's. Let's take a vote. Well, no. What I'm saying is, I think Witcher Three could still stay above because if Dean's the one that says it's the best game on, left on the list, I'm the one that's saying I like it better than The Witcher. But I'm not. The way that you okay. guys are adamant about The Witcher Three, I'm not willing to say that. I'm not willing to argue against you two. You guys sound way too strong on <laughs> Witcher Three. I yeah. would. Well, I'd probably. Put, if, but I'd probably Jeff, put Ori Five what, Rise. What, four. What if Dean, you, and Steven decide Rise? Is better than Witcher Three. That's why we should do a vote. Well, if they do, let's hear it. Like, I mean, we could do a vote, but I'm like, let's. It's more about discussion. Yeah, yeah let's I use think... our words a little bit more first. I think let's let's. Well, 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 Gosh, what about... talking to us like we're toddlers? <laughs> Here's your word. <laughs> what about wait, 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 wait? What about Rocket League at five? I loved Rocket League. Mm, Rocket League's got to be a little bit higher. I think Rocket League's. Why? At least why? why does that have to be five higher? Because it I is. Came, I came prepared to make. A case for game of the year for Rocket League. I'm almost. I want to hear. I'm like. I'm. Yeah, I'm okay that, with that yeah. case too. Here, here's the thing about Rocket League. It is the only game that has ever really made me feel like I was playing a sport. The only video game where, yeah, when you make a play and it worked out exactly like you saw when the ball was coming towards you and you saw your teammate over there and you're barely even communicating because you might be playing random with randoms online, but you've played the game so much that both players know what they're supposed to be doing and and then it unfolds exactly like you imagined it in your head and you just I every time throw my hands up in the air and I can't believe that just happened and it's so exhilarating so thrilling and I I just don't get that from 
any other game. Like, I understand that's what pe people get from, like, League of Legends or whatever, um, but that's not my speed. This is my speed. And the fact that a, a sports game, you know, to, uh, to be fair, a, sports. A, weird, a weird sports game, but a sports game has sort of captured this competitiveness and that and the feel of a real sport while also being a video game in all the right ways, like, that's that's something special um, so, for me. So I, I'm not going to be able to talk anybody out of Ori being higher than five, I'm, I'm guessing. So I think we, it's okay. We can well, actually, I would, I would put um, Rise, Rocket, Ori um, above uh, the other two, the uh, Witcher and, uh, and Super. Well, I think, I think so, Witcher's going to be the, the hard one to talk these guys right. out. Of I mean, Ori's my, Ori's my one, but, you know, again, I... I I don't know if anyone else is... is but, what about the rest of you? Is, so I want to talk about Rocket League for a second. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. So sports games used to be my favorite. This back in the 1990s, early 2000s. Um, and they've changed, you know, but they're still very similar. Rocket League, and I'm someone who hates soccer. I hate soccer with, with a dying passion and the hottest flames of hell. I hate soccer that much. I love Rocket League. I love playing it. That's because Rocket League's that... more like hockey than soccer, honestly. But keep going. I'm sorry. <laughs> Indoor soccer plays just like this. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, that's a good point. What What's so fun about Rocket League is it gives you a fun progression with your cars. That's something you can reach without ever playing against other people, and that's fun. But it's a lot better when you play with other people. But think about back to August. All of gaming was talking about Rocket League. It captured people in a way that no other game had that whole year. Because some people were playing Witcher, but not everyone was playing Witcher when it came out. Some people were playing other games, you know, Bloodborne, some people played when it came out, other people didn't. Same with Ori, same with all these games on the list. But the one game that you can really look at and said really captured, uh, you know, gaming as a whole this year was Rocket League. I mean, hell, Jeff loved it so much he organized a tournament. Mm -hmm. Now, now, was this just a flash, though, in the pan? Was this just like... No, it's still relevant, I think. Yeah, and it's, it's uh, developers relevant. doing a good job of keeping it going. But, it, I mean, it's a flash for some people. But I think its its greatness has proven itself over these last few months. And it's uh, it's it's got a burgeoning pro scene. It's, um, it's establishing itself as a truly good competitive game up there with some of the stuff like that, uh, you know, that tertiary level of... of you know, like first-person shooter and stuff like and that. I would say it's the first game to show that something like PS Plus and Xbox Live, when they offer you a free game, the value of that. So, so I get. I say put it above Witcher. Put it above Witcher. Mm. Okay, so here's here's where where, where I we're at. I think Rock League above Witcher. Well, okay, just wait, wait before we before, before we have that know. conversation because Mike's going to explode. Before we have that conversation, Ori Five Rise Four, is that okay with everybody? Yes, that's good. That seems right. Well, I mean, oh, that seems right with our discussion. To me. Uh, Dean's going to object. Yeah, uh, but let's let's hear it. Well, Dean, why, why do we keep why do we keep Super uh, Mario Maker up there and out of the discussion? Well, because I mean, that's that's, that's what we're getting to. That, I think Rise is, Rise is a much better game than that. Uh, that's, nah. that's just factually incorrect. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, <laughs> Dean, tell us why Rise should be up there and these other games shouldn't, if you if you really can, because I don't think anyone else is going to be on your side for this one. Well, I mean, just I think about some of these moments in gaming, like, you know, fighting that bear uh, fairly early on was, you know, kind of a very cool experience. I mean, you could pick the bear out kind of easily, uh, but still, for a while, the bear was a very big challenge. And, you know, this sort of... Uh, you know, just thinking of the image of Laura uh, fighting this gigantic bear. And it's just these moments in this game uh, that, uh, you know, are memorable to me. That's a very good point, and I think that is a good argument for number four game of the year. Um, and anyone, like, anyone else, is anyone else going to say that Rise should be any higher? See, I, I almost have the opposite problem where I had, I had all these, the game was very fun and enjoyable, but the whole time I was surprised by how good it was. But I don't know if I necessarily had like enough of those. Almost again, I hate to keep comparing it to Uncharted, but like those Uncharted moments that really stuck with me a whole lot after it ended. I think it was a great game. I don't think I, I think top three is maybe a push. I, I would say Uncharted is better. Yeah. <laughs> so. 
Okay. Well, hey, not, I, I want to give Dean a little, like, <laughs> Okay, so I think I think we're good then. Ori 5, Rise of the Tomb Raider 4, and now we have three games that we need to put in some sort of order. Uh, do we just want to go ahead and pick a game of the year from these three games and then just try why to... Why don't we each have, we each have one person say out of those... Yeah, we should go down line how each have one person pick out of those three. And I wanna, line, can I go last, guys? Because um, there's two that I'm not going to be able to pick between and I want to okay. kind of hear where the room's going. Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah. uh, Dean, between these three, what would you put number one? He won. I would just say Rocket League would be the most entertaining out of that. All right, Jason? Okay, of those three, I'd put Super Mario Maker. Okay. Mike? Witcher 3. Oh, fuck. fuck you guys. <laughs> Steven, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mario Maker, definitely. I, 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 hmm. I think I know what our number one's going to end up being. Yeah. Okay. I think it... This yeah. is why you don't go last, Jeff. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's it's a part... Down to you. I know, there's a part of me that really wants to be the, the, the website that says Rocket League is the game of the year. Like, I, if, we come, <laughs> if we come out of this and we say our game of the year is Rocket League, that would make me feel pretty good. But... I don't think... I don't think a, many, a lot of other publications honestly are going to say Mario Maker either. Not yeah, that, I like, you're right. if this should really be that big a factor, but it is, you know, it's interesting. No, you're right. It shouldn't be that big a factor. But I, it's, you know, we're talking for our site right now, so when we go out there and we say, what is our Games Be Game of the Year and how did you guys come to it? But okay. Super well, Mario Maker look- is incredible, so I, I would probably say Super Mario Maker is, our, is for me, the Game of the Year. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is, is, is that based off... Is that based off of what everyone said? No, 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 no. That, that was that me. That was my choice okay. as part of when you guys were going boo boo boo. I need to ask you a question, though, first. Yeah. Would Super Mario Maker inspire you to make some sort of community yeah. event around it the way Rocket League did? Uh, Not a community event, but it absolutely inspired yeah, me to. It, it, but it inspired me in a different way. It inspired me to um, absolutely start a competitive thing with a stranger who I never knew before. Uh, uh, okay, so what's more interesting there to you? The phenomenon of starting something competitively with a stranger I, to starting a tournament with a bunch of people you know? Um, I, I think the Super Mario Maker thing is more... I, I don't necessarily know that this would push it one way or the other for Game of the Year, but well, for, to answer your question, I think the Super Mario... No, I just Mario, want you to think about the innovation behind that. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, and I think the Super Mario Maker is still more innovative, so I would probably... I mean, I was, I, I was the only one who said Witcher Three. If it was just Mario Maker Rocket League, I'd say Mario Maker. Okay. Uh, what if it was just um. Well, who? who... Fuck. This is yeah. This is. Quite... I think Witcher. I think. Can we not? I mean, and even though I picked Witcher Three first, I think our consensus is that that's number three. Yeah. Does that sound right yeah, to everyone right? else? Because that's what I was trying to figure yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, I think that's fine. So if it comes down to Mario Maker Rocket League, we then we could just go down again. We have five people. Then the vote is valid, right? Yeah, I think so, and I think it, it's. I mean, does the list look right now at this point? Super Mario Maker, Rocket League, Witcher Three, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Ori, Splatoon, Until Dawn, Metal Gear Solid Five, Undertale, and Pillar. That of looks Eternity. fantastic. Does that me. look right to you guys? Yep. Yeah, but where's my other eight games? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dean, you get your own column. Yeah, everyone's gonna write their own top ten list. That's fine. You do that there. Now, now, before we, before we, you know, put this on. Rocket League or Super Mario Brothers? I mean, let's, Super Mario. Let's go down the line real quick. Cause yeah, let's let's see. Let's go hear down it. the line. Um, I'll, I'll start two. this time. Uh, Super Mario Maker. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Super Mario Maker. Go ahead, Stephen. Okay. Mario Maker, no question. Uh, yeah. Mario Maker. Maybe Rocket with some League. question. Yeah, some question. Jason. Rocket Super League. Mario Maker. And then Dean says Rocket League. So. Dean's wrong again, so everything's right in the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I think we have our our top ten list, guys, and we and, have our game of the year. Real quick, one thing, real quick, just about this game this year in general. Last year, our pick was Dragon Age Inquisition. I would take any five of these over Dragon Age Inquisition. I, I agree with that. Like, this was an incredible year for game, which that article is actually still going to get written as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, guys, I think yeah, we did it. That wasn't too bad. That was like yeah, an that was hour and fifteen that was minutes. Fun. Yeah, that was. Um, I feel I, I feel really good about this list. That I, was a good I, process. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, if you told me going into this Mario Maker, maybe I I might have had more position. But like talking it out, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. 
Exactly. And I think that was the, the whole point. And I think everyone, yeah. everyone like made their arguments really well. So, yeah. So my persuasion worked. <laughs> I'm so, I, thought, I, I thought I was going to like argue for Ori to like get on the list at all. I'm so happy. No, Ori's a great. So <laughs> it's such a good game. So good. Yeah, number five. That's really good for Ori. I love Ori. All right, okay. cool. So uh, I think what we'll do from here is I'll go ahead and I'll put this list on into a big article with this video. Uh, let everyone figure it out, and then we'll, we can all go write our own top ten list and po post those after that, and so everyone can kind of see where we're coming from. Does that sound good, to everyone? Yeah. 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 Hey. yeah I'll figure out the details of. Uh, yeah. Good. Um, Game Speed 2015 Game of the Year is Super Mario Maker. Released How about that? All righty. Sounds it good. Is, it is also the first game Game Speed has ever given a 100 out of 100 score. Yep. Yeah, after after I tried to with Smash Bros. and got yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> cool guys, I think We're we can uh... probably justifiably so. <laughs> yeah, I think we can. Uh, I think we can call it. I think that's the the stream. Uh, anyone have any final thoughts? Congratulations to we the can make, yeah. We can make Uncharted for the best game of 2016 already. I think. I oh agree. My God, here we go. You Dude, too are going to be a nightmare next year. Uh, that, that was my first story for BitMob was Uncharted 2 was Game of the Year before it came out. That was, my, that was the start of my career. Oh my god, you guys. Oh. All right, we'll have that We'll have that discussion when it comes to it. right now are chicken wings. Yeah, I think, I think we got to get uh, Jason's blood sugar fixed up. So everyone, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. This was Thank Games you Beat. for watching and reading Thank you. Yeah, this was Games wow. Beat's 2015 Game of the Year discussion. It was a lot of fun. I hope you guys had fun watching. Uh, and we'll do this again next year, maybe. We'll see. We'll have to see how it goes. Thanks for watching, and goodbye. I am ending the stream. Hey, Jeff. Good, very good job organizing that. I think that went really